Hi, I'm Pete Sumrall, and in today's teaching, my father, Dr. Lester Sumrall, is going to open our minds to the realm of angels. Throughout the Bible, angels have appeared to men, but why? Stay tuned for today's teaching. Stories of angels appear in scriptures from the first book to the last. Many people are unaware that our world includes the realm of angels. God wants us to understand both worlds. Join Dr. Sumrall as he opens our minds to the realm of angels. Thank you. You may be seated. We are discussing angels. And on a, on a commercial station this past week, uh, they, uh, they had a delegation of people there that had had experience with angels. And it was very interesting, number one, that they would put it on the air uh, from a network station. And uh, number two, the experiences that some people have had regarding angels. And uh, there was no uh, flag thrown at these people. There, 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 was, there was no controversy. They were accepting what they said. And I thought that was, that was a good turn for the better, to, to believe in these, these creatures that the Bible has the most to say about them. And all the people said, on page 21, uh, we are now at, at uh, uh, point number three in this particular lesson. And it says in the Old Testament, Gabriel, with his ministry, uh, he functioned uh, with the kingdom uh, that God had set up at that time. Uh, he appears several times in the book of Daniel, for example, uh, to give important revelations concerning uh, future events. Uh, regarding prophecy, and especially relating to God's kingdom. So uh, at this point in time, he's the telecommunications manager up in heaven. And, and uh, so at, at, at this point in time, he was telling some very great things. For example, Daniel 8, 16 says, and, and, and I heard a man's voice between the, the banks of the U uh, Yulan, uh, which called and said, Gabriel, uh, make this man to understand the vision. So he came near where I, where I stood. And when he came, I was afraid. I fell upon my face. But he said unto me, uh, understand, son of man, for at the time of the end shall be the vision. Now, you should underline that because some people read the book of Daniel and they don't realize that it's for today and not then. It's at the time of the end that, that he, was, he was moving across 2,500 years of space and time uh, to the time of the end it should be. And, and he said, I, 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 will make, I, I will make thee know what shall be in the last end, put another, I'd put a circle around those two words if I were you, in the last end of, 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 of indignation, that's God's anger against sin. A lot of people think God is ignoring our country today and all of its sins. No, he's just counting them, that's all. And when the judgment hits us, we won't know what to do with it. We won't know how to handle it. Uh, it'll be a, a very dreadful moment in the history, not only of this land, but of the other lands. Uh, I was telling you in a recent lesson that, that how God's anger is, a, is against the, the nations that forget God. And uh, we have many modern nations today. They have just forgotten God. They, they know all about Volvos and Sobs and and uh, all kinds of automobiles, but they, they don't know anything about God at all. 
They don't even know where the carburetor is when it comes to God. And, and, and so uh, the nations that, that, that forget God, God will judge them. And he said, Behold, I, I, will, I, will, I will make thee to know that's what shall be in the last end of the indignation. That's the great tribulation. For the time appointed, the end shall be. Three times, right here, it says the end time. God's trying to get your attention so that you will know that he really, truly, he means the end. Now, the end of all things. I mean, we are living in that dramatic moment at this time. Um, a fascinating part of the scripture that we've read to you is, is that uh, uh, the angel was told to make Daniel to know something. To, to, to know something. I wouldn't mind having a teacher like that. How about you? Paul, oh, Paul had, Paul had uh, Gamaliel to, to help him along. And uh, Elisha had Elijah to help him along. And, and and Daniel had, had Gabriel, yeah, a professor with enough letters after his name to wrap around your neck. Uh, but uh, he had, uh, he, he had a, an angel that came to teach him eternal truth. Uh, uh, Gabriel, and, and I noticed the very appearance of Gabriel knocked Daniel out, just knocked him to the ground. And the angel said, get up from there, I got something to tell you. So. He got up. Uh, Gabe, Gabe, Gabe appeared another time to Daniel, at least, uh, uh, to explain the, uh, the meaning of the vision. And that's in the next chapter, chapter 9. Um, uh, chapter 8, we just read chapter 9, verse 20. And, and, and while I was speaking and praying and confessing my sin, you get in the Holy of Holies, brother, and you'll start saying, oh, God, forgive me of this, forgive me of that, forgive me. <laughs> it, it, awakens, it, it awakens within us uh, some things that we didn't know that were there, you know? It's, it's brought to our attention. You didn't do this, you didn't do that, you said this, you said that. Uh, and uh, God, God can talk to us in times of emergency much stronger than any other time. And so he, he was even confessing his own sin. And he f confessed the sin of the people of Israel at the same time. And, and, and he presented his supplication before the Lord, the Lord my God, for the holy, holy mountain of my God. And then verse 21, Yea, while, while I was yet speaking uh, in prayer, and even the man Gabriel, whom I had seen, in the vision at the beginning uh, that he was, he was caused to fly swiftly and he touched me about the time of the evening oblation. That'd be around six o'clock. And, and, and he informed me and talked with me and said, Daniel, I am now come forth to give thee skill and understanding. Uh, I'd just like to have some of that. How about you? Yeah. <laughs> God, through an angel, giving you skill and understanding. What an amazing thing. And the reason we're giving these lessons is because we believe that there's going to be a, a movement of angelic operations in these last days. And we are in the last days. And that we can expect some amazing things to take place. And I want to be ready for them. You won't, you won't have time to get ready. If you're not ready, you won't be ready. But I want to be ready, prepared in my spirit, that I'm not afraid and I won't run away, that, but, but that I will stay and hear what God has to say. And all the people said? And then in the point number C, Lucifer is the third archangel. Uh, Michael was the first uh, we gave to you, and Gabriel, number two. And now we have number three that was listed in the Bible, Luc Lucifer. Uh, what was the or original ruler of the planet Earth. Uh, he is the present uh, pseudo-leader uh, of man's kingdom upon this Earth. Uh, twice the Lord described Lucifer as being the prince of this world. Uh, the Earth on which we live is under his authority. Uh, John 12, 31 says, Now is the judgment of this world 
now shall the prince of this world be cast out. And, and he is that prince of this, of this present world. And uh, in John 16 and 10 it says, of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. Now, now Lucifer fell from, uh, from the Father's uh, d divine presence and grace because of his ego. He wanted five times, he said, I will, I will, I will, I will. And uh, ex exalt myself above the stars of God. I will be as the most high. And, and God had to put him out of heaven. And, and uh, you say, what's the origin of sin? The origin of sin is on the inside of you. It doesn't have to come from the outside. Uh, pride can start on the inside, have no relationship to the outside at all. And so we have to keep our insides clean. We have to keep our insides on God. We have, we have, we have to know that we know, sure that we're sure about, you know, uh, our relationship to the Most High and our relationship is that we're servants. That we're servants. We're not lords. We're not kings. We're servants. And, and if you ever lose that servant attitude, then God will not be able to use you uh, any further. So Lucifer fell from God's divine grace. That's point number two there. He lost his position in heaven. And he, he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning uh, fall from heaven. That's, that's Luke 10, 8, 18. And then in Isaiah 14 and 12, it says, How art thou fallen? from heaven. Lucifer, you're the son of the morning. How has it, have you been cast down to the ground? G-R-O-U-N-D. This earth may be the only place in the universe where there is a thing called ground, uh, which, which did weaken the nations. That's it. That's what he's done. Throughout all of his history, just destroys one nation after another, another nation. For, for thou said in thine heart, I will ascend to heaven. Put a little circle around. I will, please. I will. Uh, uh, Send to the heaven. I will uh, exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit upon the mount of the congregation. That's, God, that's God's spot in the sides of the north. Uh, some of you are looking uh, for that. that. That is Isaiah 14, 12 to 14. I, I, will, I will ascend above, above the heights of the clouds, and, and I will be like the Most High. Can you imagine a, a, a piece of pottery saying, I'm going to be as smart as a potter? It, it can, it can, you just can't imagine a, a person thinking he's as great as the one who created him. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's beyond our thinking. No wonder he deceived Eve. Uh, he, he, had, he had capabilities. And it says that the, the serpent at that time was a beautiful creature. He entered into that serpent and spoke through the serpent's mouth. Uh, it, it was, it was the, nothing but a dirty phony and a liar and that, that he caused mankind to believe in him and, and they fell. Lucifer is the one who tempts all persons, Matthew 4 and 1. Uh, at the 11. And then, although the Bible lists only, only single names uh, for the angels, Michael and Gabriel, Lucifer has many names uh, that indicate uh, the facets uh, of, the, of the evil character that he had. Most people know him as Satan, or they know him as the devil. Uh, Jesus called him the evil one in John John chapter 17. Uh, the, the book of the Revelation uh, assigns a variety, uh, kind of a dictionary full of names for him. He is called the old serpent. He is called the great dragon. He is called the destroyer. He is called the accuser. He is called the deceiver. Now, when any of these things begin to take place, you better look for him. He's hiding there. That's his hiding place. Uh, when, when, when we look for the demon power exhibited in serpents, uh, the, uh, the nation of China has its whole emblem uh, in the dragon. 
I have personally seen the Empress throne in China. All it is is made up of dragons. There's not one pinch of it that's not a dragon. I don't know how long it would have taken to have made that throne out of ebony and ivory. It was, it was gorgeous, but only serpents. Big eyes, tongue sticking out, and fangs there. And, and so they, they worship him. They worship him. And those are, those are some of his names. Now let's go to point number two in the center of the page. <clears throat> We're discussing the kinds of heavenly beings there are. You have the three archangels. Under them were multitudes of servants. They were over them. Michael has many servants. Uh, Gabriel has many servants. Lucifer had all the demons uh, functioning in this world under him. They were the songsters of heaven. And so uh, I, he had those under him. And they were the ones that fell with him. They believed in him. Then we come to the, uh, here to number two. It says the seraphim are a group of angelic beings which possess six wings to cover uh, their face to cover their feet, and two with which they fly. Uh, they, they are very distinct from any of the other angels. Uh, there are some angels that have no wings at all, of course. Uh, they move with great velocity without, without wings because of supernatural strength and being heavenly beings. These special group here had, the Bible says, six wings, and they will still be in heaven. That's where they that's where they reside. You'll see them when you arrive there. In Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 2, and above the throne stood the seraphim. Each one had six wings, uh, which twain, or two, he covered his face, and with, and with two he covered his feet, and, and with two he did fly. And so their, their ministry is, is to proclaim the holiness of God. Isaiah 6 and 3. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. <laughs> Hallelujah. That, what a wonderful job. What a wonderful job they had of proclaiming the majesty of God the Father. The entire earth will be filled with the glory of God as, as they minister. In Isaiah 6, one, 6 uh, verse 3, and the whole earth is full of his glory. And, and the post of the door moved at the voice of them, of him that cried, and, and uh, hence was, and the house was filled uh, with, with, with smoke. That was the temple of God that he saw in the vision, of course. And so there's a, another group. We don't know of anything else they do except they are before the throne of God and they cry, Holy, Holy, Holy. Lord God Almighty. Now you see, what significance does that have? To those who blaspheme the name of God, it shows you the difference between you and these holy creatures. That these holy, holy creatures cry holy to God, and there are millions of people that curse the name of God. They, they, they blaspheme God. And some of them think they're real smart in blaspheming God. Uh, Lester and I were in a hotel uh, room recently, and we could hear the men in the next room cussing. I mean, right straight through the walls. They were in there blaspheming. And they, they had deep nicotine voices down deep inside of them. And they sound like an animal growling. And uh, the, the, they weren't quarreling with each other. It was some other situation that they were cussing about. And, uh, and, and some other business deal, possibly. We, I, I didn't listen to it at all. But uh, here they were blaspheming God when he had nothing to do with whatever business that they were messing around with. Uh, the, 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 and they were cursing him. Just the opposite of the angels who, who praise his name and say, Holy, Holy, Lord God Almighty. Although the Bible lists only, only, only single names, for Michael and Gabriel. Uh, Lucifer has many names. I think we have, we have gone, gone through that sufficient. Uh, he's called the great dragon, the destroyer, and the accuser of the brethren and the deceiver. Point number two, the seraphim 
Oh, excuse me. I am doing a little, a little repetition there. The whole earth should be filled with his glory. Let's turn over to page uh, 23. Uh, the, the seraphim mentioned in Isaiah, so, so that he became cleansed. That, that's interesting. I, that's a ministry they performed. And in Isaiah 6 and 5, then, then said I, uh, woe is me, for I am undone, uh, because I am a man of unclean lips. You could get close enough to God until uh, you, you may think you're holy, but you, re <laughs> you really try to get in there a little closer. And now, here's one of the greatest preachers that ever lived, and he begins to say, I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes, mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphim unto him, having a coal in his hand, of which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar of God in heaven. Man, that's going to be nice to be in heaven, isn't it? And, and he laid it upon my mouth and, and, and said, Lo, uh, thus, thus has touched thy, thy lips. This has touched thy lips, and, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sins are purged. And so here we have the function and operation of a seraphim, uh, that ones that had those six wings, uh, of blessing the servant of God. And Isaiah saw them, and he, he felt the touch that cleansed him from off the altar of God. Then we have a group of angels called cherubim. Uh, uh, these were the, the very first angels mentioned in the Bible. Uh, they, they, they protected the tree of life until it was removed back to heaven. Uh, in Genesis 3.24, uh, so he drove man out of the, isn't that something? It was an angel that drove Adam out of the garden of Edo. And, and he drove out the man and placed at the, at the east of the garden of Eden cherubim and a flaming sword. And, and he turned every way in a circle to keep the way of the tree of life, doing it for God, so that man could not take of that tree and live forever. And the next appearance of the cherubim occurs in the description of the Ark of the Covenant. And also the mercy seat, where, where God had promised to meet and to commune with Moses. The cherubim uh, seemed to have a, a special relationship to God, a very special relationship. Look in Exodus 25 and, and verse 18. And, and, and those, sh and, and, and them shall thou make new, make two cherubim of gold. Uh, uh, that cherub, word cherubim is already plural without that S on it. Uh, of gold, uh, of gold, and an avita word, which, uh, which, which, which thou shalt make them in, in the two ends of the mercy seat, and make one cherub on the one end and the other cherub on the other, even the mercy seat, uh, which, which ye shall make the cherubim and two ends thereof. And the cherubim shall stretch forth their wings on high, covering the mercy seat uh, with their wings. And their faces uh, shall look one to another uh, toward the mercy seat, uh, uh, which, which shall, where the faces of the, of the cherubim be. And so uh, here we have a group of angels known as, as, as cherubim. Uh, we sometimes use that word cherub, you know, as, as you little cherub, you know, a, a, little, a, little, a little angel. Uh, in the Word of God, uh, the cherubim, as you can see here, uh, they were on the mercy seat of God, and uh, they did very special things. Uh, being a protector of the Garden of Eden was no, no, no small delegation of power that, that Adam and Eve, and no one else would ever go back into that place again. And it was taken away from off the face of the earth because of transgression. 
and, and man never saw it. Man never saw it again. Now, uh, our number four is the holy ones and the watchers. Uh, oh my goodness, I was hoping to get through with this, but I'll never make it. Never make it. So, the holy one and the watchers in Daniel 4, uh, it reveals um, more categories of these angels. One of them is called the holy ones. Another one is called the watchers. And these came down from heaven demanding that Babylon be destroyed. They had altogether a different ministry, you see. They weren't worship. They weren't praising. They weren't blessing God's servants. They were, they, they were, they were creatures of judgment. And so they came down from heaven uh, demanding that Babylon be destroyed. That's in Daniel 4, 13. And I saw in the visions of my head upon my bed, and behold, a watcher and an holy one. Put two circles there. A watcher and a, a holy one. They came down from heaven. Due to the de demands of the holy ones and the watchers, the king of Babylon was, uh, was uh, dethroned, and he lived like a beast for seven years. All the function of angels. All the function of, of angels. And so in Daniel chapter 4 and verse 16, he says, Let his heart be changed from a man's heart uh, to a beast's heart be given unto him, and let seven times pass over him. My, my. Let, let, let's begin there in our next lesson, what do you say? Don't, don't miss a one of them, please. Uh, and we will continue with the holy watchers and, and, uh, and, and, and see what they have to do for us. Then we will come to principalities and powers and, and rulers that we have in the New Testament, and then thrones and powers and dominions, also in the New Testament, evil angels, which are found in, in, in both the Testaments, and I am sure that in our next lesson we'll conclude this, this chapter. Let's see, broadcasting is privileged to bring you these life-changing messages by Dr. Lester Sumrall. If you found today's teaching valuable, please consider supporting one or more of these programs and have your name added as the sponsor. Call the number on the screen to find out more. I'm Pete Sumrall, and thank you for watching.